So right now, honestly, nobody knows what the Trump administration's policies are going to be on just about anything. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty. He hasn't yet completed his cabinet selections. As we speak, there's still no designated Secretary of State. Um, so we don't know. The, the, the most truthful answer anybody at this point in time can give about the Trump administration is nobody knows what he's going to do on most things. When it comes to um, U.S.-Japan relations or U.S.-East Asia relations, there too is a great deal of uncertainty. But there are some things we do know. We know that he is not going to go forward with the Trans-Pacific Partnership um, uh, Treaty agreement on, uh, on free trade, which was a 12-nation agreement that was hammered out over a number of years, and it's now dead. Um, so that, of course, is very upsetting for the Japanese because they made what they thought were, they made a lot of concessions uh, on agriculture and other issues for what they thought would be an agreement with the United States and these other countries. Without the U.S., the agreement doesn't survive. <clears throat> so, so there's a big question mark about what the Trump administration's policies are going to be as far as trade. Um, and, you know, he's talking a lot about bringing jobs back to the United States and not having multilateral trade agreements, but bilateral agreements. But this is all, at the moment, still very iffy. We just don't know where it's going. So all we know is that it's creating a lot of uncertainty and a lot of anxiety uh, and a lot of confusion in Japan and elsewhere. We don't know what position he's going to take on, on issues of nationals of security relations. Because in the campaign, um, Mr. Trump said that, you know, the Japanese, all our allies needed to pay more for the um, guarantees, the security guarantees that the U.S. was giving them. Uh, the Japanese actually pay a lot for about 75 percent of the costs of the American base, related to American bases in Japan other than salaries of the soldiers themselves. So the Japanese pay about 75% of those costs. In Germany and in South Korea, other countries where we have bases, it's about 35 to 40%. So the Japanese pay more. But uh, there'll be pressure on Japan to do yet more. Maybe not so much to cover the more costs of Americans in Japan, but for the Japanese to do more for their own, their own defense. So they don't know what the U.S. is going to, what kind of demands uh, the U.S., or pressure the U.S. is going to put on Japan. Um, so on the security side as well, I don't expect major dramatic changes because the relationship is as critical for American national security interests as it is for the Japanese. So it may get a little bit heated, maybe a little testy, a little bit... Um, uh, uh, tense in negotiations, we don't know. But at the end of the day, there's not going to be a fundamental change in American security policy towards Japan, especially because we have to consider China and how to maintain a balance of power in East Asia. So uh, there's really not much more at this point. One can say about the Trump presidency that's be coming uh, you know, on January 20th, except that it's left, the, his election has left a lot of people just with a big question mark, uh, a big question in their mind about where things are likely, likely to go. One other thing about the relationship with Japan that's important is that, is that Trump has emphasized a lot that he wants to um, have a lot of investment in infrastructure, building, rebuilding America's infrastructure. You know, our roads, our highways are crumbling. Our airports are, are many of them are this, you know, a totally out of date, disaster shape. So there's opportunities for much more Japanese investment in the United States and these public-private partnerships. And there's already a lot of. Um, a lot of, uh, of talk, at least, among Japanese business about new opportunities that may be provided by Trump's emphasis on, 
on rebuilding America's domestic infrastructure. Um, so we just have to wait and see what happens. But the danger is that uncertainty itself is a source of instability. And if countries are uncertain what the U.S. is going to do, and if they're not confident in the credibility of America's commitments, they'll take actions to protect themselves, uh, find other ways to serve their own national interests if they can't depend on the U.S. So the, the failure of the TPP agreement to go forward, it's not clear what, that, what, the, what that's going to lead to, but it's probably going to lead to a much, much more uh, prominent Chinese role in trying to develop the Asian free trade area um, that excludes the U.S. because the U.S. is essentially excluding itself by pulling out of the TPP. So there are reasons for concern. Um, there's reasons to expect that you know even though administrations change, fundamental national interests don't really change. So that sooner or later, Mr. Trump will be pulled back to continue to adopting a position of continuing a lot of the existing policies. But he made so many, so many claims in the campaign that he was going to fundamentally change things. That if he doesn't fundamentally change things, he'll disappoint a lot of people who voted for him. If he does really fundamentally change a lot of things, he's going to it's going to create a lot of, um, of, of problems in relations with allies and, with, and even and at home with people who don't want to see the kinds of changes he's been advocating. So right now, we just don't know where things are going to go.